I'm Aaron Gold for Auto by Tell, and today we are driving the all new 2016 Mercedes GLC 300. Mercedes redesigned one up from the bottom SUV. Now, if you're a Mercedes fan and if you're watching this video, there's a good chance that you are. I don't have to tell you that this is the replacement for the GLK. GLK was a very cool looking SUV, very small, very boxy, kind of like a baby G Wagon. The problem with that shape, it looked really cool, but it didn't give you much cargo space, didn't give you much back seat room, and that's a problem because we all know what the U in SUV is supposed to stand for. So Mercedes has reshaped the GLC and the new shape is a uh, little more traditional, a little more conservative, a little more boring is what it is. But listen, this is the shape that works for a lot of small SUVs, Audi Q5, Honda CRV. There's a reason they all have the same basic profile and that is because it works. It provides you with the interior space that you need. One of the things I really like about the Mercedes GLC is the interior design. Now granted, I like the interiors of most Mercedes, but I think this is really beautifully done. Look at the way they've designed it, okay? The center stack is this nice flat panel of, uh, of wood. Um, you got this concave bit here with metal trim. The vents are kind of a poppy outy thing and the screen looks like a tablet that's been attached to the dashboard. You know what I like about this is it makes a design statement. It's almost like we're back to the to the 1960s, okay? The dashboard is not just a big slab of metal and plastic designed to hold the gauges and the switches in place. They've actually made it look like something, okay? And I think this dash design, dash design, say that 10 times fast, more than makes up for the shape on the outside of the car. Now, I want to talk about something I don't like, and that is this, the dial controller that Mercedes has been using for, I don't know, a decade, longer. It just makes everything really, really difficult, okay? If you want the navigation system, you hit Navi up here, then you have to go, oh, we're not even at the map. Let's try Navi again. No, that's the stereo. Navi. There's the map, then we go down, then we go destination, then we go address entry. It's just kind of a pain, okay? Mercedes competitors are adopting easier ways to do things, and I'd like to see Mercedes get away from this wheel and do something a little bit more creative. There are voice commands, but we've sort of been arguing, me and the voice command system, about what I am actually saying. Now let's have a look at the back seat, because this is one of the really big improvements this is where the new shape pays benefits, okay? Look at this, a proper back seat with a lot of headroom, a lot of legroom, a comfortable, supportive place to sit. This is just as it should be. I think this is now on par with the Audi Q5, which is one of my favorite luxury SUVs in this class. They've also improved cargo space. We have a power lift gate. We'll just wait for that to open and Hey, my backpack, I've been looking for that. Anyway, 20.5 uh, cubic feet of cargo space, nice durable carpet, flat sides, and if you need to expand it, there's a little toggle switch here, and that drops the seats. Now, open the hood of the GLC, and you are in for a surprise, because you're going to find not a V6 engine, but a turbocharged four-cylinder engine, because that is the way of the world. Two liters, 241 horsepower. It's actually a uh, pretty good power plant once it's on the boil, although I found that when you're on the highway, sometimes when you floor it, you gotta wait a little bit for the transmission to downshift and the engine to start doing its thing. The upside of this engine is fuel economy. EPA says 22 in the city and 28 on the highway for the rear drive version, 21, 28 for the uh, all-wheel drive version. Both of them are combined at 24, and surprise, surprise, we are averaging 26 and a half miles per gallon, which is pretty good for an SUV of this size. Now, what about a V6? Used to be that that was an option, or at least a bigger V6 was an option. Well, those days are over. Mercedes is doing this new thing where they're kind of making these mid-level AMGs. So if you want a V6, twin turbo V6, you have to go to the AMG model. The problem is that AMG stands for uh, Amur Greenbacks. So that's gonna be significantly more expensive. Um, and that's too bad because I really like to see a GLC that had more power, but you didn't need to get all the AMG stuff. Now, one of the things I really do like about the GLC this is actually a feature that you'll find on several Mercedes models. It's the way they do their auto hold. A lot of luxury cars have an auto hold feature that'll, essentially you don't have to keep your foot on the brake at a stoplight because that's a very lower middle class kind of thing to do. You press a button to turn on auto hold uh, and then when you take your foot off the brake, the car stays there until you hit the gas. Now Mercedes has a really ingenious way of implementing this, okay? Essentially, there's no button for auto hold. Not essentially, there is no button for auto hold. If you want to use it, when you come to a stop, you give the brake pedal a little stab and that rapid acceleration of the brake pedal triggers the auto hold mode. It also shuts the engine off. This has an auto stop feature. You can hear the engine is off right now. And then when the light turns green, you give it a little gas, engine starts up, brake releases, and away you go. It's a really nice implementation for a very useful system. 
Pricing for the GLC starts at $39,875. That's for the rear wheel drive version. If you want all wheel drive, you're looking at just shy of 42. And of course, this is a Mercedes, so that's just the beginning. I was able to option one of these things up to over $68,000, but there's so many options, there's a good chance that I may have missed something. Now let's talk about the competition. Obviously the BMW X3 is, is an obvious competitor, but I'll tell you about the, the ones that I really like. Number one is the Audi Q5. It's a little bit of an older design, but it has a real Really, really perfect blend of trunk space and back seat space and front seat comfort and it's a better value they started just under forty two thousand dollars but Audi gives you all-wheel drive uh, and leather interior as standard whereas the Mercedes comes with their own fake leather they call uh, MB techs once you add all the options up you're looking at about sixty five thousand dollars on the Audi but keep in mind that's with a v6 engine something you can't get in the Mercedes unless you go to the AMG version now another vehicle I want you to check out and again if you're a Mercedes fan and this may make you go, huh? Cadillac XT5. Say it, huh? Brand new design, really good looking, uh, powerful V6 engine, good fuel economy, a really nicely put together package. Another one to make you say, huh, is the Lexus RX. Now, I would imagine that you Mercedes fans are going, no, I don't want to drive a glorified Toyota. But you have to check out this latest RX. Lexus is really changing their tune. The uh, new RX is much more involving to drive, much better looking. It may surprise you. But let's get back to the Mercedes here. What's the verdict? Huh? Love, hate, love, hate, love, hate. I'm going to go with love, okay? Granted, there are a few things I don't like, but overall, this is a very useful package. It's a very comfortable package. It looks good. I really like it. Thanks for watching. I'm Aaron Gold, and I'll see you next time.